name of God, of his Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God will not judge by appearance. He will rule with justice. And so let us worship and praise him. Lord, open our lips that we may glorify and praise your name. And so as we've been invited to let those living waters flow over our souls, it's in this instance the living cleansing waters of forgiveness that we seek to bathe our spirit in as we gather before God's altar of grace and of mercy, confessing our sins as we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in glory, in the newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. The focus that we have this evening is that where the meditation of Andre Noan is where Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. And the context in which he locates this text is in Nicaragua in the uh, late 1980s where Nicaraguan women weep over the destruction of the people, the land, and their homes. They weep for the children whom they, they nursed and brought up with tenderness and affection and they lament the passing, the sudden mysterious disappearance of their husbands. Their land is ruined, their crops are burned, their houses bombed, and so they weep. Their tears are tears that well up from their innermost being. There are no words, no explanation, no arguments, no meaningful reflection. It is a time of war, of wanton murder and destruction. The questions why, by whom, and for what purpose have no answer. And so, only no one sketches that scenario of death and of deprivation. And then he continues, our world does not mourn much, even when there are so many reasons to mourn. As people die from violence and starvation, from natural disasters and technical failures, as works made by human hands with great skill and devotion are stolen, damaged, or destroyed, and as our planet becomes an increasingly threatened place in the universe, we begin to worry about solutions, but we seldom stop to mourn the loss of what is dear to us. But if we had at first mourned, can any solution we arrive at be a real gain? And so only no one continues into the story of Jesus and he says, as Jesus was led to his execution, Women mourned and lamented for him. These women were accustomed to cry for condemned criminals and offer them sedative drinks. They were the official mourners of their time and of their society. And their mourning was considered a work of mercy. But Jesus says to them, and he looks at them and he says, do not weep for me, rather weep for yourselves, and for your children. And that is a text from Luke chapter 3, verse 28. And then Jesus points to the destruction of Jerusalem and to all the war and violence that will come upon humanity. And he says, these days are surely coming when people will say, blessed are those who are barren, the wombs that have never borne children, the breasts that have never suckled, 
Then they will say to the mountains, fall on us, the hills cover us. For if this is done to the green wood, what will be done when the wood is dry? If we want to mourn for Jesus, we have to mourn for the suffering humanity that Jesus came to heal. Andre Nowen says, if we are truly sad because of the suffering and pain that he suffered, we will include in our sadness all of the men, the women and children who suffer in our present world. If we cry over the death of the innocent Holy One of Nazareth, our tears will be able to reach the millions of innocents who have suffered over the long history of the human race. Weeping and mourning are considered by many people as signs of weakness. They say that crying will not help anybody. Only action is needed. And still Jesus wept over Jerusalem. He wept also when he heard that his friend Lazarus had died. And so our tears reveal to us the painful human condition of brokenness. They connect us deeply with the inevitability of human suffering. They offer the gentle context for compassionate action. If we cannot confess our own limitations, sin and mortality, then our well-intended actions for the making of a better world easily backfire on us and become expressions of an undirected anger and our frustrations. Our tears can lead us to the heart of Jesus who wept for our world. As we weep with him, we are led to his heart and discover there the most authentic expression of our loss. And so the tears shed by the women of Nicaragua and the millions who mourn their death throughout the world can make our soil rich with the fruits of compassion, the fruits of forgiveness and of gentleness and healing action. We too must weep and so become more and more humble people. So it is the quality of our solidarity when it is soaked in compassion that is seeded from our tears and from our own sense of our brokenness that will make us warriors but warriors that are eager to restore, to build than to break down and to burn out and that perhaps is the most poignant message of our times and what COVID-19 has drawn so close to our lives that of our own mortality, when it starts knocking and bringing death to our doors and to our lives so suddenly and so unexpectedly, we grieve, it enabled us. So how many times have we not heard people say COVID-19 is real? Is it real only because it has touched us? What more of the myriad of other destructive, breaking, debilitating things that is real in the lives of so many people? But perhaps the reality of it, the restorative value of it, if our suffering and our little taste of pain or our deep, dredging from the wells of sorrow brings us to that place of empathy and out of empathy the resolve to act but that is the process that will lead us to transformative change and that is what Andre Nowen has led us to consider today.
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Eternal Father, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, fulfilled your will by taking our nature and giving his life for us. Help us to follow the example of his humility by walking in the way of the cross through Jesus Christ our Lord. And Lord, today we also give you thanks for the master's degree in music that Levi Alexander obtained from the University of Stellenbosch and he did it so marvelously with cum laude and we share with his family, his beloved Janine, his sister Michelle and all those who look upon him this moment with great pride, his grandparents and all those who have sojourned with Levi to this point where he is crowned with success. And we thank you also for his place in the life of our cathedral's music ministry. And today we also pray in this Tuesday and Holy Week for the Anglican Church in Kenya, in the Diocese of Baringo, and for the Bishop there, Musa Kamuran. Lord, in your mercy. And so lighten our darkness, Lord, and by your great mercy defend us in all perils and dangers of the night for the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever. Amen. And so, beloved, for those who might not have heard that uh, our President, Sir Ramaphosa, will be addressing the nation at 7 o'clock tonight, it will either be my fellow South Africans or compatriots, but whatever we, the President and those who advise him, the Cabinet has resolved, we pray that it will be one that as a nation that we will accept and be guided by and reallocate and refocus our energies uh, to whatever comes out of tonight's communication. In all things, God is good all the time. Good night, everybody.